Father Lord, this is something that you plant and therefore we come in awe at your presence and seeking the word that comes straight from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you will help me to beg God to speak to you. Praise God. Because the people that preach on this platform have been preparing for the past. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Oh. Amen. Uh-huh. As I sat down yesterday and the man of God was speaking and he said, cycles, patterns, how God does things again and again. And I remember at the end of this last session, I walked up to our pastor and I said, this is happening again. I didn't even know how it was going to be complete to this point, but I told him, I said, the last time I came to Higher Ground Conference, I just walked in and the minister that was preaching the first message, it was Apostle Michael Rocco, and he started teaching And somehow the message went from his hand into repentance. I don't know how many people were here. And he kept trying to bring it back. But the thing was not bringing. So he let it go. And he ended that message very unusually. No power, nothing, nothing. He was just saying that this is how God wants I was there, and I saw that play out again yesterday. How many of us saw that? Okay. So you saw when Pastor was saying it takes maturity for a prophet to allow that kind of a move, especially a prophet that has power. The reason is because we are in such a time that (laughs) revival has come. And anytime you are going to look at the second coming of Jesus, you should first look at the first coming of Jesus, right? It makes sense. Based on what he taught yesterday, look at the patterns, similarities. They always repeat them. So sincerely speaking, it's true. How many of us agree that it's true? That they always repeat themselves. Always. The devil, the exam question is set for Jesus is the same exam question. He just changed the options. Imagine all the years and the devil didn't change exam. He just changed the phrases of the questions. But it's still three part question. Part A, part B, part C. Lost of the eyes, lost of the flesh, pride of life. And it's the same exam is setting for everybody. Three parts till today. Consistent. It doesn't change. And then, if we look at the first coming, we'll find out that the prophecy kept saying, before Jesus will come, who will come? Huh? He will come before him in the spirit of Elijah, and who is the name of that person? Who is the name of that person? John the Baptist. And he has a particular message. What is the message that he's going to use as a dispatch rider for the Jesus that is coming? Repentance. Anytime a, especially in this part of the world, when a governor or a president is coming, some, somehow, even if you're in your house and you're not on the road, the way you know is the siren, right? Yeah, wah, 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 wah. So you you have a feeling, especially when they have told you that the president is passing this way, you have a feeling that the president has come, not because you saw the president, but because you heard the siren. Now, whenever Jesus would be coming, it's important for the church to know that the message that 
you know, does protocol for him is first the message of repentance. And then you see that that message is reverberating almost everywhere now. Many people have noticed that if you listen wide, you find out that people who would normally not even talk in that line are beginning, even faith preachers, are now beginning to talk about repentance because that is the message that normally heralds the coming. It comes first. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important for us to know what is going on. So you remember also in the book of Joshua, it says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Yeah? The Lord will do wonders among you. So whenever you see God coming to do wonders, you should not be surprised that there is a sanctification that goes in first. And that's why I suspect there's going to be a lot of power flow in this particular conference. I, I thought somebody will be excited about that. <laughs> yes, you, because I just said to you that even though you have not seen the president, how you know he's coming? Uh, please, can you celebrate the grace of God upon Pastor Ayo? Thank you, sir. So how you know, are you with me? How you know he is coming is the siren. How you know he's coming is that message. That message of repentance. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. His message was very clear. Repent. Repent. And such a message, and the Bible yet said, John did no miracle, and yet soldiers went to meet him in the wilderness. It's is mind-blowing. There was nothing to show, but he carried such an unction that dragged people, dragged people so much that he even abused them and they couldn't go. Because, I mean, if you brought John to your conference, you should not invite him again. And yet he carried such an unction. I'm, you know, I, I, I taste, you know, I remember the last time we were at ABM and I had a feeling of what John did. And I was preaching, I was preaching it. And then I gave an altar call, and I saw this armed mobile policewoman running towards the pulpit. Hey, I was, <laughs> I was using style to move. To everybody was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> what's going on? What's she coming to do? I was gauging the speed, I was praying. I was looking at her. And then when I saw that she got near the pulpit, as at that time I moved away from the stand, just in case, because you know, gone. And she just fell down. Aha. Then I knew that's anointing. What did John carry? That he didn't have to satisfy people to drag them. John Car and Jesus said, of all men, of all men born of women, there is no prophet that is like John. John was carrying the spirit of Elijah that did many miracles. But that spirit did not do a miracle in John. Same spirit. Same, if you don't know what they call same spirit, that, that's the best example of same spirit. Same spirit that, you remember Elijah? Does anybody know Elijah? Eh? Elijah? Eh, eh. <laughs> Abuse him. <laughs> and you will know him. I mean, they abused somebody and a bear came out to assist his anger. And that same man is John. Jesus says, John is Elijah. Have you read it in your Bible before? Now I'm telling you the truth, is there? Same spirit. That message comes before he's coming. 
And any time I have seen that trend where the message comes, sincerely go back and check, he comes. Celebrate Jesus. I don't know why. And he comes. So if people have prayed for this meeting, and the, the siren that we heard yesterday should inform us that the president is around. Yeah, even without seeing him. He's around. Something is going to happen in this place. How do we know? We heard the siren. And that siren has been consistent. Anytime we hear that siren, he's called the king is coming. Can we just bless the name of the Lord for giving us that privilege? So our pastor mentioned something yesterday that I just want to build on. There's this thing that normally confuses us, even as believers. A nature of God that I've studied, even in dealing with our transgressions and iniquities, I call it the forbearance of God. That ability and capacity that God has. Now listen to me. The capacity and the ability that God has for somebody to be misbehaving in front of him and is calm. I don't have that all the time. How many of us understand if you have children, you will understand what I'm talking about. And so he expressed it in that scripture that we read yesterday in Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. And he said, notwithstanding, I will can you remember, Jezebel, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Everybody read verse 21. One to go. And I, I'm not hearing you. And I gave her space. Now, now my emphasis this morning is on space. Who gives somebody space? And which kind of space does God give? Hmm. How long is the kind of space that God gives? How wide can... You know, we also give space. If somebody mistakenly marks you on the leg and then you turn and say sorry, you give space, right? The person does it the second time. Depending on where you are from, you, you give space. But there is a point to which that's, do you know when Peter was, I see Peter and I guess, I don't remember, when they were asking Jesus, how many times go, go, does my brother offend me so that I can calculate and program myself and be ready and be counting it? Jesus said, 77 times 7. If, if somebody was to be disappointed, I'm sure it's the person that asked that question. Because I'm sure he was expecting maybe like four times or five times so that he will start counting. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. But then he says 77 times 7. What does that imply? It talks to me about the kind of space that God gives for misbehavior. And it's 77 times, seven times a day. So it means that once it's 12 midnight, what happens? I can't clear. Which kind of God is that? 70, and he said, how many times will he offend? Do you know, he, he, uh, mm, how many people have offended God to a point that even to say, God, I'm sorry, even you, you feel, no, even, Lord, don't worry. <laughs> how many people have felt like that before? And then he said, they are new every morning. What kind of space does this God give for misbehavior per day? 
Now, I'm not talking about lasciviousness here. I hope you know what I'm saying. Because he says, how many times will your servant, will, will you, will you, will someone offend you, and you will forgive. Forgive means the person comes back to say, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean the person just stands up and say, uh, the blood of Jesus has already catered for it before I was, I was sinning. Like one foolish boy that was going to sleep with one of my mentees every weekend. And after every session, session, he would stand up and, and the girl started feeling bad and crying. And he says, why are you crying? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus has catered for this. You don't need to feel guilty. The spirit of guilt, I bind it. I, I, I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> I'm saying space. Praise God. Look at the space he gave Peter. If I was the one and my disciple that I handed over the keys of the kingdom to open the Gentile nation, said, I have never seen it. I know they are beating me, but I will say, Peter, how much space? Look at how much space Jesus gave Peter. And despite that, after the cock crow, Peter cried and cried, he still went back to fish with the key. And Jesus, I mean, Jesus has sat down by the father. Jesus said, uh, Father, I'm sorry. I have to go. The, the guy I gave the key. <laughs> I don't think Jesus is not supposed to leave everyone again. But Peter, how much space does this God give for repentance? See how much space he gave Thomas. Thomas was not there when he was supposed to be there. They told them to be there. He was not there. And then he now came back and said, no, I said, I see him. And put my hand. He's even talking. And Jesus came back. Not for the other disciples, because he was very specific. He said, Thomas, oh yeah. How much space does this God give even for our own belief to be healed? Have you heard scriptures like, after 400 years, I will visit you, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Ha! 400 years is not yet full. Let me say it in my language. One is Sheto. Do you know the worst part of it? Even the devil. That's the worst part. That's it. the worst test. That the devil offended in heaven. And as bad as what the devil did, that he wanted to take the throne of God, they should have flung him into the furnace of fire straight away. He should have started burning since that time. But the Bible says, God still gave the devil a short time. You don't know where that scripture is. He said, for the adversary, your devil, your, for, your, for the devil, your adversary. Eh? For adversary, the devil. Romance about seeking whom he may devour. The reason why he still has chance to seek whom he may devour is because he knows that he has, he has a short time. Who gave him short time? You are not talking, oh, because it's the devil. Who gave him short time? Unfortunately, that short time has not finished. How short? Eh? How short is the short time of God? That he gave the devil time. He should not... Mm. And, and that's why if you stand up and say, devil, I destroy you in the name of Jesus, even the devil will laugh because you don't know what he has. He still has 
a short time. That's why Jesus did not destroy him. Jesus did not say, devil, I, I sent fire on you. Now depart into the lake of fire in Jesus' name. No, no, no. Jesus did not pray that kind of prayer. Because Jesus knows that the devil still has space. Now, the God that gives devil space. Ha. Eh, did you hear me? What did I say? Say what I said. The God that give even devil space. Please turn to your neighbor and say, how about you? Now, what is the reason why we are having this session this morning? Is because of the abuse of that space. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3. Are you there? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3 says, one, two, go. We're going to read verse 3 and 4. One, two, go. Knowing this first, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me read that one. Knowing this first that there shall, be, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own loss and saying, saying what? Read together. Where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. I'm talking space this morning. Everybody read verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us what? Now, everybody scream the next few words. Not willing that any should perish. Uh, my God. But that how many people? Oh, should come to repentance. Can I get two people on stage here? You know, sorry, I like drama as much more. Any two people, uh, two guys, just volunteer. Ah, volunteer now, you will show on TV. Two guys. Thank you. <laughs> At least you get something. <laughs> you don't know who's watching you. You may marry like that. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Now, this is, you look more like God, okay? This, this is God, right? Now, it's drama. You have done drama before, sir. So, like, Offend me, like beat me, like beat me. Beat me is allowed. Be, as in real beat. 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 Ah. I said, do you remember the prophet? They asked him to beat and he didn't beat. <laughs> beat. All right. And, 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 and I come to my father. He beat me. Eh? You, you may not be able to act it very well. So can you act the part I act now? Okay, so now you come and report. He beats you. Where are you? Go and beat him. Beat him. Beat him. And so you can beat this one very well. See, it's not fair. Oh, yeah, report him. He beats me. He beats me. He beats me. Please uh, avenge me. He beats me. Yes, yes. I should beat him. Yes, yes. Ah, he beats you. Yes. Hmm. He, he beats you. Yes. Huh? On my back. He beats you. Yes. He beats you. Excuse me. Can I? I am God, though. Can I beat him? Why, why am I doing that? Ah! Somebody did not understand what I'm trying to say. Why? 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 <clears throat> why, why am I doing that? And I say, sorry. Sorry. And it goes again. And the same thing happens again. Ah! What happened? He beats me again. He beats you again? I should beat him. Yes. He beat you again. Yeah. Ah! He beat you again. Ha! Ah. Ah. Go and beat him. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. Now, 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 why is he doing that? Who knows why? Eh? Read scriptural, scripturized. Why is he doing that? 
he has something called a long suffering. And that long suffering means that he suffers. Now, let me explain long suffering for you. He suffers for the misbehavior. He suffers. Why is he suffering? He's suffering because he knows what to do. He has what to do, but he's taking the pain. Why? Because he doesn't even want to inflict it on this guy. While he's slacking and saying, ah, he beats you. Do you know why he's doing all that and taking the time? He's doing that for adventure. This guy may have sense. You see, because one blow with God, it will not even exist. So he's, he's doing that. But adventure, this guy will wake up and have sense and say, ah, I did bad. I'm sorry. If he does that, what has happened? Does he need to beat him again? No. That's God. Now, now let me draw a meeting. Imagine that he did that to Jezebel. You don't understand what I'm saying? Who gives Jezebel time? If they cut Jezebel in the church, that's the last day. Imagine God saw Jezebel making his servants to commit fornication. Make it, as his Jezebel is operating, what is happening to God? He's suffering. He's suffering loss. But he has long, and he said, mm, I gave her what? is peace. The only thing about that space, number one thing about it is that it's very long. But number two thing about it is that it is finish. Celebrate them as they take that seat. When you see a man that space has finished over his life, child, a.k.a. Judas, this guy was stealing money. Jesus was suffering. Jesus knew Judas was stealing. Oh, you think he didn't know? The Bible said this he said because he used to help himself from the post. And Jesus knew. But what? A time is coming when the prophecy of the betrayal of Jesus will happen and the spirit that we elect the, the disciple that we use. But there was a space. Judas had time to repent. Judas had time. There is nobody that will go to hell that will stand up and say, excuse me, sir, you did not give me time. Nobody. Nobody. No pastor. Nobody. Ah, do you? Let me tell you. I'm not supposed to say this this way, but permit me. I tell you, it is not the first time a man of God misbehaves that he goes down. I don't know. Uh, sir, me, I can tell you, I, I, there are many misbehaviors that, let me tell you the truth, I've been a man of God too small. I can tell you, there are many misbehaviors that God covers. That even you, man of God, you will look like and say, ah, thank God, oh God, thank you, thank you. They did not see me, thank you. I'm telling you that God, it is not the first time, many times, it's not even the first time a man of God commits immorality that he enters the newspaper. You can come and ask me after the service. I have five. I reach out to a lot of girls. So I can tell you, you know, when you reach out to ladies, <laughs> you have file. File of different files, confidential files. I can tell you. It's not the first time. I have stood in between disgrace and grace. Many times with people and I've confronted men of God to say, excuse me, sir. This sister says, you are, you are sleeping with her. Before it enters disgrace, 
Can you allow us to handle it and cover it? There's an anointing that covers. Can you allow us to pray with you? Can you allow us to check and deal with this thing? The reason why it is not yet exposed is because of... Do you know the first time your heart travels to have an affair with somebody else separate from your wife? Many times, that's not the time your wife knows. They are not talking now. What? But the Bible says people now count that space for slackness. That's the problem. People take advantage of the space to now mean that there is nothing. Do you know what he said? They said all things continue as they were. Nothing they happen. And I would like us to see this confusion. Nothing will happen. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. But look at verse 10. What did he say there? Second Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come. Everybody say it will come. It will come. Everybody say, but the day of the Lord will come. It will come. Look at the look at the look at the confusion. The confusion. Psalm twelve verse eight. I want to read it in easy to read version. It says, "The wicked walk on every side. When the vilest men are exalted, the wicked are all around us, and everyone thinks evil is something to be preached." The confusion that is battered by this space that God gives is that because God gives space, it looks as if the wicked is prospering. You don't get what I just said now. Now, do you remember our drama that we just did now? Now, do you know if care is not taken, this, my boy, will begin to feel bad that the person doing bad is going scot-free and nothing is happening. And me, I'm laying demands on him to live right. And then he's showing me, you know, it's like Joshua, when he went to quickly run to Moses and said, these two people that did not come to service, elder that made that, they are prophesying in their house. Go and stop them. And Moses says, I wish that all the lost people were prophets. You know, that was the times when we even wished to point to God. God, can't you see this wicked man? Kill him. Let me tell you. The issue of envying the wicked can be so real many times. And I'll tell let's 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 look at the scripture and see how real it can be. Psalm 73 is dedicated to that. And I would just like to read it before we pray. Psalm 73. And look at the, the confusion and the dilemma that many of us find ourselves. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, verse 12 is it, it, a long read. So let, let's just start from verse 12. Okay, let's start from verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such a house of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps are well, I well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death. You know, sometimes they even die well. I want us to be real practical this one. Have you seen, you understand what I'm talking about now? Sometimes they even get to old age, they don't. So have you seen some wicked people without cancer before? And the Bible says, they are, they are, for there are no bonds in their death, but their strength is firm. Everybody read verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued. 
like other men. This thing is bringing confusion. And sometimes you will see the righteous in the kind of trouble that these people are not in. And the Bible says, they, they therefore pride compassed them. You know why they are proud? Why they are proud is because they are insulting men of God and they are doing fine. And the Bible says, therefore pride compassed them as a chain. Violence covered, they even get more violent. Because nothing, nothing, everything, nothing they happen. So they get proud. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than hearts could wish. Imagine, wicked people. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens. Ha. And their tongue walketh through the earth. They have mouth. Therefore his people redon hither. And waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, who are the people saying now? How does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. As you are sitting down here, there are believers who have got into this junction. I have kept myself a virgin in vain. I have held on to God. Trusting God for a life partner, the, the godly way, in vain. I have believed God for healing in vain. This wicked envy, this envying of the wicked, has driven several believers. And let me tell you, even people that are following the principles of scriptures at certain times, and they look outside and keep seeing people that are not following it, who are making seeming progress. I've gotten to this junction where they said, I think I've kept the rules in vain. Where are we? Verse what? Verse 13. And washed my hands in innocent sense. For all the day long have I been plagued. And chastened every morning. And look at this. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. The matter with his space that he gives us is that it, even though it's very long, it has an end. And if you don't understand the end, you will swap from your lane to the lane of the wicked and end with them. It will not be your portion. In this journey, we have seen people who have been going on the righteous lane, but as they kept looking at the wicked, just when they have victory, and they are, I hope you know we also have an end. Eh? Just when they are glory, and the Bible says, whosoever endures to the end shall be saved. Is that not so? Now, I, I, didn't, I didn't really like that scripture because what he said, endured, suggests. Eh? It's the, I will, he will have said, whosoever reached the end. But he said, whosoever endures, endures already suggests that we are going to go through a lot of contradictions. But there's an end. The difference between the righteous and the wicked is the end. Unfortunately, it is the end. And they said, no master, there are tears. Let us remove the tears from the wheat. What did the master say? He said, leave them. At the end. And that's why in this kingdom, the reason why people follow the ungodly is because of all these things. The prospering of the wicked. The Bible says in verse 27, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a warring from thee, but it is good for me to draw near to God and put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Now, he gives space, but he has an end. The wicked can be prospering. 
The wicked can be looking healthy. The wicked can be looking as if everything is working well for them. Look at what he says. Let me just read this last one and then so that we can just wrap it up. Let me just read this last one here. He says in Psalm 37 verse 34. Now, let, let me read it from verse 34. Wait on the Lord, keep his way, and he shall exhort thee to inherit the land, and when the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see. Now, everybody read verse 35. One to go, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet, he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Now, look at what he talk about verse 37. One to go. Mark the perfect man. And behold the upright. Why? For the end. Now, 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 now look at now. Followership in this kingdom is not necessarily based on the present prosperity. What makes me follow you is not that you are prospering. Now, what did the Bible say about followership? Hebrews 13, 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Now, everybody read the last part there. Whose faith follow? When you are following, what should you be considering? The end of their conversation. People that did like this, how did they end? Not how did they fare. People that carry stones and start stoning prophets all over the place, no problem. If you check very well, they, they are not the first person. They have appeared before in history. That's what they taught us yesterday. You have the privilege of going back. There is nobody doing anything today that his type has not done it yesterday. There is nobody going on a journey today that his type has not gone on that journey yesterday. Now, what the scripture is saying is that before you follow him, first find out his type. How did they end? Ah! Those days on campus, we had some boys, it was club boys like this. We'll be trekking, trekking, trekking. They would just drive in. Doom, 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 doom. Ah! And so, you know, and, and, they, they can even splash water on you. And then you're like, who did I offend? You know, one day my friend looked at me and said, ah, life is not fair. I said, my brother, it's not about now. It's about then. It's not about who is driving now. It's about what are we driving then. Whose faith follow? Considering what? The end of their conversation. Because sometimes the righteousness of the righteous does not seemingly appear blossoming until the end of his conversation. And God rewards the righteous man. He says, mark him for the end of that man is peace. I want to close it up here this morning. And I tell you that the reason why you look at our country and you see wicked men prospering, they are buying cars, building houses, doing well, and they are not even as sick. And the reason why you notice they are not sick is because you are sick sometimes. So you now start looking for who is not sick. I tell you the truth. The end. The Bible says, then understood I their end. That the reason why you see the wicked prospering is because there is nobody that God wants to perish. Not even the person you wish God will keep. Because I know when they were doing the election, now there are some people that were saying, let somebody just wake up and just die. And you, you know, we really wish some people died. How many people confess that you wish? Let me tell the truth. This is the tell the truth. Say, I you wish some people actually died. And you were praying, Rakatamashte Barabada. You just wake up and hear the news, he, he has died. <laughs> and then when he has died, he said, Hallelujah! The righteous shall pr prosper! Amen! When wicked men are not us, God didn't kill them. He helped them to wake up. Why? Not willing 
that any man should perish. Unfortunately, you don't realize that he's not even willing that even you too should perish. God, come and judge Nigeria. Come and kill all these bad people. Just wipe them out. <laughs> Unfortunately, while you are saying that, you forgot that you also stole money in the office. And you don't know that it is because of his forbearance that we are still here. Can somebody just celebrate the mercy of God before we close this one? As I leave, can we close our eyes this morning? I'm just going to make a very simple call. All eyes closed. You know, yesterday I, I was saying, sometimes God will send many people to us to preach to us, give your life to Christ, give your life to Christ, give your life to Christ. Somehow you just in this space. Sometimes God will Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost in his mercy will keep telling you, stop this thing, stop this thing. And then you keep, you know, <laughs> and these things are still fine in this space. Before grace turns to disgrace, can somebody in this auditorium this morning repent? I don't know who that person is. But all eyes closed, if you are that person and you feel, look, this is true. God has been warning me about this. I've been feeling, I've been hearing messages that God has been, and you know, somehow the thing has kept going. But Lord, I want to, I don't want to count your forbearance for slackness this morning. I want to give it all back to you. Can you raise that hand? I want to pray for you. Just raise it. Wherever you are, you want to say, Lord, at this point, I surrender to you. Wherever you are in this auditorium, whether you are giving your life to Christ for the first time or it's something God has been warning you about and you have just been enjoying the space, counting him for slackness, counting his justice for slackness. I want to say, Lord, I, 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 I surrender to you. I surrender. If there's anywhere the Holy Ghost has been having struggles with you and he has given you a long space, a long space, maybe you will wake up one day and you will just decide to obey his dictates and that long space, there's an instruction that has been pending. And you all say, Lord, here am I. Oh, I surrender. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for every hand that is raised, Lord, salvage us from the disaster waiting at the end of the road we were traveling. Salvage us. Snatch us from iniquity. Snatch us from wrongdoing. Snatch us from disobedience. Snatch us from error. Snatch us in your mercy. Snatch us. Somebody cry out to God and say, Lord, snatch me from every, every wrong end that I'm moving towards in your mercy. Snatch me, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Celebrate God, church. What God has come to me. I'm moving up to high.